I'm Gretchen Hirsch. I'm a sewing blogger and I love to write about vintage fashion. So today I'm really excited to talk about a 50s style icon, the, the circle skirt. So let's go on over to this mannequin. I have a dress on here that has a full circle skirt on it. And the reason it's called a circle skirt is because if we laid this out flat on the floor, it would form a complete circle with a hole in the middle for the waist like a donut. Uh, so this is something that you can draft yourself very easily. Uh, you don't have to buy a pattern for this. And you can make it for any waist measurement you want. And then uh, once you have the pattern, you can add it to a bodice like this, or you could just finish off the waistband and make it a skirt. So you can use any waist measurement you want. I'm gonna draft it on a half scale today, just so it's a little more manageable for you to see. So I'm gonna use a 14 inch waist measurement. If you're doing this for an adult, it'll probably be more like a 28 or a 30 inch measurement. But let's say we're gonna do 14. So this is more like a doll or a child or something like that. So we have to have a pattern for both the front and the back. So for a 14 inch waist, we need to divide that in two to get seven for the front and seven for the back. Now we need to do a little more math. Uh, you're gonna divide seven by pi, which is 3.14. And for a, 14, uh, for a seven inch waist measurement, that's gonna get me to 2.25, and that's figure A. Now don't worry too much about the math right now because this is all gonna be online. But just remember that figure A is 2.25. Next thing you want to know is what is the length of your circle skirt. You can make it a floor length circle skirt, you can make it knee length. Uh, for today, I'm going to make it 12 inches because we're thinking about sort of like a doll size. So 12 is going to be figure B. And this is what our circle skirt is going to look like. It has sort of like a quarter circle shape with a little bite taken out of it for the waist curve. So let's get started drafting. You're going to need some paper, just plain brown craft paper like this is great. You're going to want to have a ruler. This is just a clear gridded ruler. I love these. It's uh, two by 18 inches. And I'm going to do this with a Sharpie so you can see. You're going to start by making a vertical line that is at least as long as figure A plus figure B. So I'm going to make it about 15 inches. There we go. Next thing we're going to do is forming a perfect right angle at this upper corner here. I'm going to draw 15 inches again, out this way. So I have sort of an inverted L shape here. Now the next thing we need to do is make the waist curve. So we're going to need to use figure A for that. If you remember, that's 2.25. So I'm going to use my ruler here, find 2.25, and I'm going to start making, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to anchor that 2.25 mark at the corner, and I'm gonna start making little dots out from it. So I'm making a little quarter circle that radiates out from that curve, I'm sorry, of the corner of the right angle. There we go, so I just have a bunch of little dots in here. And now what you can do is just connect these dots. You can use a French curve, I'm just gonna kind of freehand it here. There we go. And that's going to be our waistline curve. Next thing we're going to do is make the hemline curve. It's going to be a big sweep like this. Now remember I said I wanted it to be 12 inches long. Why don't we add half an inch to that so that we have a hem allowance at the bottom. So I'm going to find 12 and a half from that waistline curve now, okay? I'm not working from the corner, I'm working from the waistline curve. And I'm going to make a bunch of little dots that radiate out from the waistline curve exactly 12 and a half inches. And this is gonna form our hemline sweep. Okay, and now you can connect these dots. You might wanna use a curved ruler for this because this is a really uh, a long stretch of dots to connect. See how the curve just lets you connect those dots really smoothly and seamlessly. There we go. So this is our hemline curve. So this is the basis for our pattern. So what we want to do now is add a seam allowance to the waistline seam and also to the side seam over here. Okay, so let's say it's going to be um, a quarter inch because remember we're working on the half scale here. So we don't really need the full five eighths of an inch. So I'm just gonna make a tiny little seam allowance. You can pretend this is for a doll or something like that. One of those 18 inch dolls, this would be the perfect size for. So there's a quarter inch seam allowance at the waistline. 
And I also want to add it to this side because this is going to become the side seam. Okay, so there's a quarter inch seam allowance added to the waistline seam and to the side seam. And we already included the hem allowance, so we need to worry about that. Now you want to label your pattern just so you know what you're working with. I'm going to put a little bracket. This is going to be the center front and the center back. Remember, we're going to use the same piece to cut out the circle skirt front and back. So if you buy a commercial pattern, you'll notice they have a little bracket that looks like this with arrows on it. And that tells you that you're going to put this side of the pattern on the fold and cut on the fold. I always like to label my patterns. I think I know what I'm going to remember what they are, but I never do. So I would write circle skirt. And I would write the waist size, because you might want to make a bunch of different waist sizes for different people in your life. Uh, 14 inch waist. Cut two on fold, so you have cutting directions for yourself. So you cut one for the front, cut one for the back, sew them together, leave a side opening for the zipper, and then hem, and you have a circle skirt. So I also want to talk today about how you can hem your circle skirt. There is a lot of fabric to hem, the circumference of a circle skirt, so uh, it can get a little tedious. So a great way to do it is to use a narrow hemmer foot. A narrow hemmer produces this beautiful, tiny little hem that looks like it was perfectly rolled by hand, but it's actually done in one step by machine, so it's pretty cool. So let's go on over to the machine, and I'm going to show you how to use this foot. So if you look at the foot, you'll see that it has a little scroll in the middle of it. And you need to feed the fabric through the scroll, and it will turn over on itself and then stitch itself down into this beautiful little hem. So I'm going to start by positioning the fabric right under the foot, and I'm going to lower the needle. Once the needle is lowered, I can raise the presser foot and kind of feed the fabric into the scroll so that it's kind of doubling in on over itself. And now you can just start stitching. And you might want to pull the threads to the back here while it's getting started and kind of help feed it through. Okay, now as I'm sewing, I want to keep rolling the fabric in on itself. And the most important thing is that you want to make sure that the edge of the fabric here is touching the edge of the foot. So I'm just feeding like that. Start real slow. And it's just so easy to do it this way. You, you're going to be amazed once you get the hang of this foot. So let me take this out and show you. So what we have here is a beautiful, perfect little mini narrow hem. So as you can see, this would be a great way to finish a circle skirt and not do hours and hours of tedious hemming. So that's how you draft a circle skirt pattern and also how to use a narrow hem or foot to hem it.